able to stop this sociopath in the White House? Your, your guess is as good as mine, Michael. Do you think there's blackmail involved, or do you think that they're just complicit, meaning the Republican uh, Party, which is a Democrat party in disguise, just simply wants its own interests advanced, like coal for McConnell uh, and oil export, and they're happy with that, and they don't care what he does other than that? I, I get a feeling that we're all uh, uh, victims of, uh, of uh, collective... Uh, um, uh, collective uh, uh, um uh, how would you say, uh, numbness to everything. Like, you were going to say co a collective amnesia, I think you were struggling to say, right? Hitler, they had uh, all of Germany. Wait, wait, no, did, did you, did you want to say collective amnesia? I'm trying to understand what you were saying. Sir, did you mean, uh, collective, it, did you mean collective amnesia because you can't hear me? No, I mean, yeah, yeah, collective amnesia, exactly, on a national scale. All right, so you think the nation is suffering collective amnesia, which is how the sociopath Barack Obama gets away with this. Possibly, and possibly, as you, as you mentioned, there's possibly some blackmail involved here. I don't know. Well, then you have the nation filled with sportsomaniacs. I listen to men, white men. I hear them talking about sports and restaurants. I want to jab a fork into the table. Idiots. In a time like this, in a time like this, the idiots are sitting there talking about sports. I say to myself, I mean, yeah, that's the collective amnesia. You could say it's a drug. You have that. You have Howard Stern putting out uh, defecation jokes, making hundreds of millions of dollars over a, a lifetime, putting out the most stupid, inane, adolescent jokes. Who is his audience? Who is Howard Stern's audience? It's, uh, it's uh, adolescent males, isn't it? They don't know what's going on. He has a big audience for uh, flatulence. He's capitalized on it. But, you know, look, that's not going to get us anywhere. If all the smart people in the world, including guys like Howard Stern, were to stand up and be counted as Americans, we could stop this imbecile before it's too late. Thanks for calling. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. I'll be right back. And I approve this message. The politicians can pretend it's something else, but Donald Trump calls it radical Islamic terrorism. That's why he's calling for a temporary shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until we can figure out what's going on. He'll quickly cut the head off ISIS and take their oil. And he'll stop illegal immigration by building a wall on our southern border that Mexico will pay for. We will make America great again. We agree with you, Donald. We want Islamic State stopped. We want the surge coming over our southern border stopped. That's enough for me. Let's start with those two things. I told you there's a video coming out of a little monster, an Islamic monster. A child terrorist is shown in a suit in an execution video pointing to Allah and uh, this and that. The Islamic State shows these little monsters being trained in the video before they c kill people, shooting British men in the head, again, these vermin. And it ends like this. Before the shooting, a masked man with a British accent mocks Prime Minister David Cameron calling May slave of the West and a mule of the Jews. And then he kills these men. And then they say ISIS will one day invade Britain and impose its extremist version of Islamic law. I want you liberal idiots to listen to this. He says, quote, only an imbecile would dare to wage war against a land where the law of Allah reigns supreme, he says. The Islamic State, our country, is here to stay, and we will continue to wage jihad, break borders, and one day invade your land where we will rule by the Sharia, close quote. How many Muslims here in America want Sharia law? Have you seen the latest polls? You morons. You know, you liberals think that you're being tolerant, but you're really just being cowardly. Do you understand that? Do you understand this difference between tolerance and cowardly behavior? Okay, well, I, I mean, I see the difference. Let's take some callers. Shulamit on KSFO, welcome to the program. Please make your point. Thank you, Dr. Savage. I'm a longtime listener, first time caller, and I do agree with uh, Mr. Trump, but I do not believe that he has the temperament to be the uh, president of the most powerful country in the world. Wars have been started by insults between um, 
leaders, and he does not have a filter on his mouth. Now, I... Uh, no, that, very was, interesting. Good point. So who started the war with Islamic State? Uh, Mr. Obama, who has such a filter? Oh, <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. You were playing. You're playing a, a, a board game with me. I couldn't help it. Oh no, I'm not playing any games. I think that that the. Well, I'm saying you're, you're that saying that. Oh, wait, let's review. You say Trump doesn't have the temperament because he shoots his mouth off and he's liable to start a war inadvertently. So what? Obama has the temperament. He started a war with ISIS, didn't he? Well, yes, you're right. I agree with you, but I think so. I don't think it's the temperament that started this war with ISIS. I think it's the religion itself and its uh, interpretation under the rules of an 18th century Wahhabist from Saudi Arabia that causes this war. The spread of this cancer is from the Wahhabi sect of Islam, and that's the problem that people have to come to understand. But it's it's way beyond the the uh, the learning level of the average person. But uh, you don't like Trump, what, because he's too uh, vulgar in, 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 in a saying or too shooting from the hip? What part of it? I'll give you an example. I'm Israeli. I have joint citizenship, U.S. and Israeli. Uh, when Netanyahu was first uh, prime minister, he was uh, a lone wolf. He was doing his own thing, and he was not successful. This second time through that he is prime minister, he has learned his lesson. He's learned to be a team player. He's learned to moderate his words, and he's been very successful. And um, I think Trump needs to learn to uh, think before he speaks. He, what he maybe he w maybe he will in his second four years. <laughs> well, <let's, laughs> I, you're fun to you're fun you're fun to speak with because you get the innuendo right away. So yeah, I, I know what you're saying. You're saying give him the first four years, he'll be a little rough around the edges, and the second four, he'll be a little more polite about it. At that point, I'll be vice president, and I'll be advising him to cool it a little bit, take more vacations in uh, in Palm Beach. He, I think he'd be a fabulous Secretary of Commerce. I think we've got the entire cabinet. Right now, right now, with the different um, can possible candidates that we've got. But what about, well, let, let, come on, you're a very intelligent caller. What do you think about him stopping the, um, the uh, flood of illegal aliens from Mexico, building a wall, and, and stopping all Muslim immigration until we can sort out who's here and what they intend uh, to do while they're here? What do you think about that? I'm absolutely for it. I, I work, I'm a certified Spanish interpreter. I work with a lot of Hispanics from many, many countries. And yes, it has to be stopped. I'm, I am the daughter and the granddaughter of immigrants. I understand the immigrant experience. And yes, we have to build a wall. One I, I'm the son of an immigrant, and I have to keep saying I'm a son of an immigrant. So people understand that I have one foot in the old world and one foot in the new world which is very unique, by the way, in the media. I don't know that there are any other Americans at the top of the American media landscape like myself who come from an immigrant background. And I'm very sensitive to this, to this idea. But most people in the media are knee-jerk liberals who say that it's not our way and you have to accept immigrants. It's nonsense. You look at the Statue of Liberty, it says, give us our poor, give, you, give, give us your poor, your hungry, and your whatever. What I said to people was that was written by Emma Lazarus when there was no welfare waiting for the poor and the hungry right? Uh, and those yearning to be free. In other words, they came here to work in factories. They didn't come here to live on, uh, on, on welfare. That's right. And, they were, and many of them couldn't work because they refused to work on Shabbat, and it ruined their lives. But they found a way. They found a way. And... That's how it should well, be. Well, okay, well, that means, uh, that means adapting to the mores of the land rather than trying to make the land adapt to your religious viewpoint, which is the case with Sharia uh, interpretation of Muslim law. They don't want to uh, do as the Romans do. They want the Romans to do as they do. Thank you so much for calling the program. Let's jump to Richard in Eugene, Oregon. Richard on KUGN. Go ahead, please. One minute or less. Yes, sir. I just wanted to say I, I listen to you not because I agree with you, but I learn from you. And I think a lot of people talk about sports not because they're stupid. They just don't care. So thinking about politics and everything else is a lot harder. I understand. Yes, they, they don't care. That's a good point. But to go back to your first point, 
You say you're a liberal, you don't agree with me, you listen and you learn. If you learn and don't change your ways, then what's the good of learning? I never said I didn't change my ways. I just don't agree. <laughs> okay. I'm going to help you change your ways. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero. 400 pages with facts. I'm sure that you'll read some of it and disagree with all of it. When I come back, your calls right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. My New Year's resolution is to move forward on our unfinished business as much as I can. Like flooding America with cheap labor for Zuckerberg. That's what this American project is all about. Uh-huh. That's especially true for one piece of unfinished business. Ah. Our epidemic of gun violence. Last month, we remembered the third anniversary of Newtown. This Friday, I'll be thinking about my friend Gabby Giffords. All right, let's Five turn years it off. into her recovery. He's a demonic maniac. He has one goal. Take the Constitution apart one day at a time. He floods the U.S. job market with foreign competition. He skirts Congress once again. He seeks to admit another 100,000 foreigners to work here when jobs are few and labor market participation is very low. It is not in the interest of U.S. workers, especially tech workers. He is doing it only to satisfy the pirates in Silicon Valley and elsewhere in those businesses. He plans to award via executive order work permits to 100,000 foreign college graduates, including deportable aliens, in order to compete with U.S. workers for jobs. So he doesn't represent the United States in any way. He never has and he never will. He's just a smooth salesman. He's one of the greatest con men in the history of the world. And how he's gotten away without being impeached is only a matter of owning the government media complex and the fact that there is no Republican Party. The Republican Party consists of special interests, as you well know, and it is now a puppet Democrat Party under the tutelage of Quisling o O'Malley, whatever, sorry, I don't even know his name, Ryan, can't remember the beard. All I know is the beard. It's a myth that there's a Republican Party. Just as there's a myth of cops who are killing young black men, another great myth of Barack Obama and his insane uh, regime. I have the data. If you listen to these liars in the media and the liar in the White House, you'd think we're in the grip of an unprecedented crime wave, wanton murder, in which cops go out and randomly gun down innocent, unarmed teen blacks just for sport. It's a, it's a fake narrative put out by the gangsters and the Black Lives Matter movement. It's a lie put out about Ferguson, Missouri. It's a lie about Michael Brown. It's all a lie. I have the data. I have the data for you to look at and listen to, but I don't expect you to listen to the data any more than you listen to the true data on global warming, which is another gigantic propaganda exercise. I found something out over this week, as I've known for a long time. So-called progressives or so-called liberals are not interested in what the facts are. They're interested only in naked power, and they will use all means necessary to push their agenda as you will find out in 2016. And so we have to push back. May I blow my own horn for a moment, because no one else will? As you know, many people listen to this and other radio shows, unfortunately not on terrestrial stations, which I wish you would listen on, because that's the bread and butter of the show. The terrestrial radio stations, the big, big signals that we talk about every day. But many of you listen on I phones and Android devices, computers, to the growing uh, trend, and that's called streaming radio. Many of you can't get it in some markets, so you go on to a website and get it. Well, you may not know this because no one will tell it to you, but it came in. There's a company that checks on these things, like who listens to the shows on streaming, and one of them is Talk Stream Live, and they sampled 1.7 million homes. 1.7 million devices, in other words, were sampled in the fourth quarter of 2015, October, November, December. And I'm happy to tell you that this show is number one by a land mile. They say that Savage's streaming success captured the top spot for all four quarters in 2015. His massive margins over all of the tour competitors is unparalleled. 
I have a 27 share. The next is Limbo at 14.1, which I don't know, says a lot. And I want to thank you for listening to the show. Don't call and tell me how great 